be still running buses and ferries and all that sort of stuff through this lockdown. So it's been quite good. Uh, I haven't had to go to the office as yet, touch wood. Um, but we have done, you know, work is harder. So what I've seen and what I guess one of the worst things is I was spending an awful long time sitting in front of a screen talking to people like most days for 10 hours a day. And um, it just seems the worst thing is you miss that sort of, um, you can't sound off at people because you can't go and have that quiet little chat over a coffee and, and have a little vent about something um, to somebody that, you know, close. A bit harder to do that over a video conference. So that's one of the things, um, worst case, but I mean, I'm lucky. I'm sitting up here at Snell's Beach. I'm today looking out at a beautiful seascape. Um, but I've got my son and his partner and a 14 month baby here as well. So when I'm not here, I'm having to run around and look after a very active little kid who just wants to go outside and do shit. So yeah, it's been very, very busy. Well, that sounds very good, Granddad. Congratulations. Yeah. I was always going to do this, but if he's 14 months and running around all over the place, it's probably a bit more like this. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. So, um, yeah. yeah, some of the some of the best and worst parts have been um, the the dealing with working at the same time as uh, teaching. I guess becoming parents, becoming teachers, or, or minders. And um, there's a there's a little rabbit hole discussion for later today when we get through a few more intros is that the education system was originally created to be a babysitting service to enable the workers to go to the factory. Um, now we're not able to go to the factory due to COVID-19. Uh, we're experiencing what it's like to not have schools available to us. Um, and of course, are there for education, but we'll save that for another time. Um, we'll, we'll go down that uh, rabbit hole later. Uh, I think we'll go to Dr. Regina Sterling for the next intro. It's good to see you. Welcome from the mighty Waikato. Yep, you ready there? Can you hear us, Regina? Oh, she put a comment in the chat saying she's oh. having problems with her speakers and microphones. So. Oh, okay. Well, we'll go to someone else then. We'll come back to you in due course. Mm. Uh, let's, what about Steely? Steely hasn't even got his. Andrew, have you got your camera there, mate? So in, in the meantime, we'll go to Dale, who's a hasn't been for a while, but was here in the early days. So you're, an, you're, an, we'll say you're an old pro. How are you, Dale? Oops, hang on. I'll unmute you. Oh. There you go. You're unmuted now. Well, hi everybody. Um, hi Ryan. Nice to see you again. Thanks for the invite. Yep. Yeah. The, the best thing for lockdown um, initially for me was, you know, I got to be with my 21 year old all day, um, even though he was gaming most of the time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he went back to work weeks ago or, we, you know, we went to level three. And so I guess the worst part of lockdown is that, you know, I'm starting to feel a bit lonely, um, you know, missing, missing people, missing doing things, missing variety. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty much over it. Um, I think now I'm ready to kind of move on and, and get re-energized. So um, I work for um, a US firm called Sapience Analytics, which is a leading productivity solution. So probably a good time, you know, for me to be able to get back out there and, and help organizations to, I guess, you know, how do we lock in the benefits of, of what we've learned um, from from working from home, et cetera. I think there's a real opportunity for us here in New Zealand. Um, but, uh, yeah, will, will we take it? Um, there was a really neat thing on the news last night. I'm not sure if anybody saw that Tom Foolery poem. Uh, but if you haven't, just Google it. it uh, he's, a, he's a British poet. And it was all around, really around. It was very reflective. And I guess asking the same question, you know, um, will we, you know, will we really take forward some of the learnings from, from this lockdown? So have a look if you haven't already. But nice to see everybody. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dale. Um, I have seen that. I've been sent it like five times and never got past the first three seconds. I kind of went, oh, it's one of, another one of those... I had 3,000 memes sent to me. In fact, my, my uncle, who was not the most um, technologically um, advanced, has become a Facebook king, and I'm constantly getting tagged, sent memes, messages, jokes, you name it. It's like, remember the old days? 
um, when the fact the fax machine and you'd get the uh, jokes in here as a fax. We, yeah, so he's a bit, I remember those days my, when I was, I was quite a little kid, but um, my my uncle was revisiting those days now with Facebook. So I have to go and watch it. So what I was going to say is pop it in the chat. I'm also going to do something for the first time and pop something in the chat, but that is the link to the next AFQY. So I think there, there's the pay as you pay what you can um, from free to, to whatever. So hopefully we'll see you there. And um, I haven't actually publicly launched that yet, so I might change a few things, but you've got to see it there first. And coming back to, um, where, hang on, I'm trying to turn off. There we go. Uh, now we've got control of the Zoom. Um, yeah, people getting bored. I think when we come out of level three, um, it was quite evident that we were bored because there was a large, large amount of breaches and um, people not staying at two meters. And I think there was one article that my wife talked about where there was a, a bunch of mates that had bought over a hundred dollars worth of McDonald's on the boot of their car or one of their cars. And they were all literally like burger swapping. Um, so hopefully um, we can all laugh it off in six days time and, and not be cringing that we've got to go back to level four because a whole bunch of, asymptomatic carriers have um, spread it like wildfire um, on the first few days of level, level three. But remains to be seen. So yes, I hope we were laughing at, it, at that, not cringing at it. So let's go to um, Regina now. You got your speaker sorted? I think so. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. It was all working fine last night. Something went wrong this morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How is everybody? Good, thank you. Good. Yeah. Um, so just a reminder, um, a bit of an intro of where you are, what you do, um, and the best and worst part of lockdown. Give us a bit of a picture. Okay, so I'm in Hamilton. Um, currently teaching social policy. And... Um, Best and worst part of lockdown. Uh, I guess the best part, spend time with my cats and my partner when she's not working. Uh, the worst part, not, in ha not having access to the office printer. <laughs> You're saving the planet by not having access to that, that printer. So <laughs> very good, very good. But we're doing everything digitally now. So um, that was one of the things I was gonna say in relation to your um, intro Roger you're saying you're working from home and it's like well you've got to thank yourself for that in some regards <laughs> uh, with the ability to being um, IT guy so let's go to our next uh, our next newbie and then we'll come back to some of the experienced hands let's go to Steely the man of steel can you give us one of those um, Superman uh, looks <laughs> thanks Ryan <laughs> can you hear me yep, yep. perfect so I'm uh, sitting in Auckland in the uh, office, i.e. the spare bedroom. And um, I'm a HR business consultant um, and work for a, a startup health and safety company, uh, Save 365, so varied role. Um, uh, been busy enough, been steady, and um, a bit going on, uh, helping out a crisis management team, for example, as we start to think about what happens to businesses uh, and at level two, so I've just been talking to a few other people about what they're up to, so that's been interesting. Um, best thing about lockdown, um, I think I've been more productive and um, probably um, done a lot more thinking. Um, but the worst thing is I'm a social animal and I do like uh, the odd caffeine fix and um, uh, nice craft ale after work or later in the afternoon to keep up with uh, with work. And I think business development suffered severely as a consequence of not being able to get out and about. Excuse me, when you say craft ale, do you mean Spates being a good Otago man? <laughs> <laughs> Ryan. There, there is only one beer. Here. There is only one <laughs> beer for us Otago man. <laughs> I'd love to say that, Ryan, but I couldn't possibly lie. 
Well, there you go, Sorry, Roger. What was it about um, not being able to give people an earful? Um, I'll, next hey. time I see Steely for a beer, I'll give him an earful about not drinking and supporting spades. But hey, oh, hey, remember, hey, buy hey. local, buy local. Buy I'll, have it, I'll, have it, I'll have an Emerson's. Yeah. Okay. Emerson's is also at Dunedin. Um, created beer, very good, very good. Um, so let's go to uh, Richard Brooks, second timer. So, morning, you, brother. Cheers. Um, so I'm Richard from North Auckland. Uh, I'm director and co-founder of a startup called Credit Sense, which is a credit origination and decisioning platform. Uh, best part about um, lockdown, and I think I sort of mentioned this one last time, was actually just enjoying my home. I've, we bought a brand new house a while ago and it's <laughs> haven't really done a lot of living in it because we've been working so much. So it's been quite nice to actually just explore it and just enjoy it as it is. Um, worst part, uh, pretty much the, state, the same as everyone else. It's that social aspect. I really enjoy my morning coffees with the team every morning, catching up what's going on. Um, and uh, conversely, the afternoon beersies as well. Lorries are good. <laughs> it's a good time to to just unwind and get to get to know people a bit more. If I was even here, that's my cat shouting in the background. That's all right. Good to have good to have the company of the cat. So, <laughs> um, yeah, enjoying the house. Um, we had a uh, leak in the roof um, with that big torrential rain. Freaked me out. Never had it been in a house or anything. I had a leaky roof. Not even when I was a student at Targo and in one of those dodgy flats. <laughs> And um, on the same call, uh, same AFQY cafe, three other people also had leaks in the house. Um, and we've all, so I was like, oh, well, it's not the end of the world then. <laughs> Whereas initially I thought it was quite major. So yeah, enjoying enjoying the house. Um, wish this 1970s old board and batten crapper was <laughs> a yeah. nice new house. But I hope your fun. roof st- uh, survived last night because geez, did it rain hard last night. I thought it was hail at one point as well. Oh yeah. Yep. He's quite me up from dead sleep. We've, we've had, um, well, one of the good and bad things uh, about myself is you, you, nothing wakes me up once I'm asleep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but when I'm asleep, I keep everyone else awake. <laughs> um, I won't go there with the snoring. So um, let's uh, jump over to Angela. You have to unmute yourself or I can unmute you. Angela Campbell. There we go. How are you going? Hello, people. Well, we're good. We're hanging in there. Um, I'm Ange or Angela or whatever you want to call me. Um, for those who haven't met me, I'm sure I've been called worse. Um, highs and lows. Do, 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 do. Highs, I'm, I'm loving learning a lot of new technology stuff that I wouldn't have done before out of pure laziness. Um, and lows, just the... I guess sensory stuff for me, um, the sensory side of socialization. So um, just seeing real texture, skin and, you know, smelling people's shampoo and just having background noise that you're not familiar with and things like that. Um, I, I really notice that. It's like bird song when it's not there, you notice it, right? So, <laughs> um, and just hugs. I'm a hugger, so. Uh, virtual hug. <laughs> um, that's an interesting one. No one's ever talked about that, but that's quite um, uh, in terms of the sensory stuff. Because in, with with working from home, before we all had to work from home like this, um, there was a lot of obviously conjecture. But one of the things that's I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but there's a music track which has this, the sound of rain, and there's a scientific study done on the fact that the the hum of a the hum of the noise of a cafe um, is uh, perfect. You know the perfect amount of noise. So when you're in silence, silence can be deafening. Um, when it's too noisy, it's distracting. And, and now, if the noise level goes over a certain level, it gets too um, it's too loud and takes your attention and drags your focus away. So for you to uh, mention that that was that was. Um, quite interesting this made me may think about that point and yeah there's a you can probably get on spotify or anything but there's a a quite a well-known um uh, rain falling you know the sound of rain and apparently that is meant to be one of the best sounds to work to 
for me it's one of the best sounds to sleep to but yeah <laughs> um but um coming back you were talking about um enjoying your house richard and uh, i'm just trying to think who it was that talked about the tom uh, dale talked about the tom um, video in terms of what will we take forward and uh i was actually thinking once upon a time, Roger, in terms of uh, traffic and traffic congestion, yeah. is that um, if we all continue to work from home on a semi basis um, and at least, uh, you know, uh, what, what was it? Oh, so the community from walking. So when you go out of so joining, remembering all the parts from joining, this, you go out on your bubble walk. And the community in the first few weeks was absolutely like people would move across the road and wave and thanks, you know, and and they would move for you. Well, you'd, you'd both go to move to give the street to each other and sort of chuckle and go, oh, like, you know, after you, after you, whatever. Now, I'm, I won't go to what's happening now, but um, what I thought was if we all work from home and parents were able to walk their kids to school and had that community of parents talking to parents and kids talking to parents, and it comes with that, you know, it takes a village to raise a community or it takes a village to raise a kid and how much better the upbringing would be for the kid to have that. Um, and also the, the traffic, because if you walk the kids to school and then come back home and then go to work when you, so you've got all these people starting their journey at different times, rather than that massive congestion during peak time, traditional peak time. Um, so, yeah. I don't know, just seeing going, going back that. to the old days is what you're saying. <laughs> yes, in a lot of cases. Oh, well, I better in that case I better bring out the story about when we were kids and we'd, we'd come home from playing sports on a Saturday and we'd go to the general's house. So the general was the oldest guy on the street, and we all knew our neighbours, and we'd all go and tell him our sports results and what was good and bad, and he'd have a box of fizzy drinks there. So he'd go through and ask everyone what they wanted if you wanted a lime or a raspberry or a, um. What was that um, ice cream soda? That was always my favourite one, the yellow one. Um, and there was this real community about our street. And then when after he passed away, um, and there was also a couple of houses changed from houses, uh, more owned houses to flats, and people changed on a regular basis, that community just fell apart. Um, so, yeah, going back to the olden days, great idea. I think there's a huge benefit in it. Uh, so let's go to uh, Daniel Hopper down in the, in the Waikato as well, and then we'll come back to that discussion, and then we'll get Karen and Sean in as well. Then we've got everyone covered, and we can just chat through our coffee. So have you, Dan? How's it going? Hey, um, yeah, good. Um, I think it's been about a week since I've joined the call, but I think this is about number five or six for me, so it's been cool that you've carried this on, and there's always... <laughs> Sean always seems to be here. I don't know if he's here every day or, but um, yeah, there's always a few random faces. There's one day he wasn't, and then there was one day I wasn't. So. Well, you didn't even come to your own. <laughs> yeah, that was a Monday after Anzac weekend, and I'd done a digital detox. Um, so I was like, yeah, I don't want to do that. I don't want to, no, no one will be there. And then I started getting all these messages. So about 8.45, I fired up, and um, it was myself, Sean, and uh, Guy and Pereira. So yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm, um, and, and hello Rogino, I haven't, se haven't seen you for a hello. while. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I do marketing and um, I look after LinkedIn Local Hamilton, if you've ever come across that, that's, that's me behind that. So I'm hoping to get that firing um, as soon as possible. I, I spoke to a politician and he seems to think level, level two, I'm going to be able to do some sort of format so ryan's probably useful information to you as well um, yeah you can do you know, you're, like you're 100 and level two the, the um, networking event thing with these tables set up and you sort of alternate mm -hmm. around you know because you're keeping that safe distance that that's kind of probably what the next phase of networking will look like um so yeah looking forward to getting into that i really like basketball and going to the gym and combine those two things as something that I'm a bit peeved with now. Well, I'm ready ready to watch some basketball and I'm ready to get back to the gym. And like you you ought to be doing your weights at home and yeah, I'm doing doing your, getting your, getting your, what is it, your um, 
shot perfected while you're at home with a hoop? Yeah, well, we, um, we moved. I moved in with my partner into a townhouse, so we, we've got literally nowhere to, to put a hoop anymore. So my hoop's lying in, the, in our tiny little back section and, and all the schools and everything have been closed. So in the park, so I haven't even been able to go down to the park and then shoot hoops, you know, because I don't want to be that guy who... Everyone's like, fucking look at that guy, Bernard Dick. So, <laughs> Well, funny you say that. In West Auckland, I, I think I've been to the school about 10 times before I sat, found the sign that said, this is closed um, in the bushes. All right. <laughs> Sticking up. But uh, basically, our whole community has been going to the school and using the school. Right. And um, I sort of looked at it, because I don't use the basketball hoop, but there's a whole bunch of people that were. Um, but I would use the field to walk the dog, because that's one of those places. So... Um, we didn't stop and sit or use any of the, um, it's a helicopter. Um, we didn't sit and stop and use any of the um, equipment, but heaps and heaps of people were kids, etc. So I was just, I was a bit sort of fearful of that, but then I was like, well, technically I'm as bad as anyone else, so I shouldn't say anything. Yeah, I think there's that, that line of park or playground, and often they're combined together, so it's like, the council sort of cordoned off a lot of the playgrounds here with like security tape or whatever they call it. Yes, we have a park up the road that's just either the park or the school that our dog like. And the park has signs um, uh, strapped to all the everything. There's a sign on everything on the slide on each chair of a swing, you know. And But at the school, the playground doesn't have that. It had one little sign about this big that was on a chain that went across the driveway and someone had removed the chain to get an, ac get an access because there's builders and had taken the chain off I think the sign got mocked off so technically no one knew but yeah so we'll be seeing some videos of you slam dunking some uh, basketballs when we get out into level 2 um, no probably not um, I've only slam dunked ball once in my life when I was about 18 or 19 or a fair oh, bit you can do it you can do it wasn't Five foot eleven is just. If I had a couple more inches, it would be a lot easier. But anyway, um, so what was the other thing? The thing I've liked. Um, to be honest, there's not a lot <laughs> that I've liked. I've had I've had a lot more free time to sort of work on projects, and because I've just launched a business this year, as you know, so working on things behind the scenes with with marketing and stuff. There's always something you can be doing to, you know, drive leads from somewhere. So just trying out different social media and, and things like that, I guess. And um, I guess cooking, like, cause we've had to cook every night. Me and my partner often would go out a couple of nights a week, um, get takeaways in. So having a different meal every night, so it's not so freaking boring. has been cool trying a few different new meals, I guess. Um, that, that fits into Rogers going back to the old ways of uh, cooked, cooked in there at home. Good on your young fella. So, yeah, that'll be me. Sweet. Um, yeah, we've been, uh, we've, cooking's probably a good topic for everybody and, and coming back to Richard enjoying his house and, and whatnot. Um, my my wife, uh, thankfully, gratefully, um, does most of our cooking and makes my lunch. Uh, so I'm pretty well spoiled. And the only downside is that I used to love cooking and um, learned to cook Italian while I was living with Italians in the UK on my OE and have barely cooked um, at all. So I should get my get my skills back on the on the uh, stove. So let's go to Karen Phipps, the new Director General of External Engagement for AUP <laughs> CompSci um, School of Mathematics mm. and Computing. I, I don't need to say that bit now. <laughs> Hi everyone. Um, as Ryan just said, I work for um, AUT and I do external engagement. Uh, I've just taken on a six months of convent, so um, yeah, Ryan's just done the introduction, so that's cool. So, um, Karen is suitably humble and awkward about it. I've been <laughs> congratulating her and making her feel uh, awkward um, every time I do so, hence, yeah. hence the squirming as I say it. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. Job, job well done. Um, job, well done. Thank you. Uh, the worst bit of lockdown, I'm very similar to Angela. Um, I'm in my bubble on my own, so I haven't 
touched another human being for about seven weeks is it seven weeks now seven eight weeks so and i and as um people who know me i like to have a hug so yeah that's kind of what i'm struggling with at the moment uh the best bits i've got i've got a few best bits actually um that's good yeah yeah i've reconnected with a lot of people from england friends and family that i haven't spoken to for a long time I've got the cleanest apartment in the whole of Auckland. I have not got one bit of dust in my apartment. Um, it's just sparkling and lovely. And also, not so much in level three, but level four, I actually enjoyed the peacefulness and the quietness. And yeah, I grew up in a little village in England. So I was used to, I'm used to like no cars and, so yeah, I actually really enjoyed it. And actually the day of level three, I, I got a bit of a shock. I woke up in the morning, there was all these cars and, and I was like, oh, I actually really enjoyed level four. So um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's my experience. Yep, so uh, I have to agree. Level four was amazing. I, I enjoyed that. And then level three was a shock. Like, um, I can't remember if we could, and I just never noticed it. Cause, uh, you know, you put a drought, you don't notice things when they're so normal or common. But I'm really noticing the sound of traffic, and we we live um, a reasonable distance from the main road, being Tiatatu Road, which I get my bus from. And um, when we're in the middle between two places, you, know, you can go either way to get the motorway. So we're not like right beside the motorway, but being in Tiatatu, so we're here, you go either side, and the motorway, the causeway is in front of our house. So we look over the causeway to look at the um, sky tower. So maybe the sound comes up that way, but yeah, you can just hear this hum. And it's like, oh, really? That was so nice without it. Yeah, here's the twoies. Um, so during level four, we had uh, wax eyes that we've never had here. We had um, fan tails and we had an entourage of twoies like I think there's normally two here but we had probably had a four or five I don't know what it was um but they'd be racing and dive bombing and then they'd sit there and twoie all away um so yeah but let's hand over to Sean last person um to introduce himself uh so yeah thanks Ryan uh Sean Muller down here in Wellington uh yeah we got buckets of rain yesterday in fact I had to step outside a couple times to see if we were getting hail as well because I mean it was it, it was hitting the the windows and the droplets must have been coffee cup sized. Um, so I'm an enterprise architect and uh, an innovation uh, consultant. Um, I'm locked down with my wife and three of my four lovely children. Um, for those of you who've been on the call before, know that I have a seven week old um, who is doing wonderful. Um, you, usually I comment about the, the fact that, um, the good upside for me was I was here for my wife and with the new baby in the house, but I've been thinking about it. I'm actually I, hearing all of you, and, and I'm not saying this is a negative, hearing all of you extroverts talk about how you miss socializing with people. Um, I'm an introvert, so it, it has, has actually been kind of good and I've been able to kickstart my meditation practice, which for probably the last year I haven't been able to do and I have uh, 15 years of meditation practice uh, behind that. So being able to kick, have the time to kick that back off has been really good. As in, whose phone's going off? Me. Thank you. Um, um, so when you say kick off, do you mean you are a meditation coach? Or no, 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 no. I just you personal, personal meditation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I was just yeah. checking because I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. No, no. I, I, uh, so I'm still a novice after 15 years on this journey, and I, I wouldn't ever, uh, in fact, I, I hear other people coach, and I don't argue or, or uh, if, if I disagree with what they're doing, I, I don't even chime in because it, for me, meditation is a personal journey, and, and there's, there's no way that I could even, uh, give advice on my path, let alone on somebody else's path. Um, okay. The hardest part has been, uh, so, I mean, so Ryan hasn't commented on the kill room in the back of my office today yet, 
but um, that's uh, the hardest part has been getting access to hardware products because uh, we live in a house that's about 20 years old and there's a whole bunch of projects that need to be done around the house and I have time to do them now but no access to any products to be able to do it with uh, and only recently gotten access to the paint to begin painting my office so yeah I think that's been the hardest part for me. Cool. I think it sounds like someone's got a TV going. You could um, either turn that off or mute yourself while you're not talking. No worries while you're talking, but someone's got uh, something going. And Richard Brooks, with your, enjoying your house with your new sound system going? No? No, that's not me. <laughs> okay. I'm getting quiet here. That's all good. Um, so, uh, yeah, the, the kill room. I think that was, who was it that picked that up um, and asked that? But uh, yeah, all the tape in the background, um, a bit of a bit of a construction project uh, going on. It does on look there. a little bit dodgy. Yeah, someone added with the, with the hat and the beard, it, it reminded them of a, what was it? Um, what was it? Jack Sparrow, was it in the background? It, it is, it is Jack Sparrow. <laughs> Did you make that? No, no, no. So I bought, this was a limited edition from Disney World. He actually talks. Do he's it. Got a, the he's got a mo, yeah, he's got a motion sensor in him. And uh, when you walk in front of him, I've got it turned off right now. But when you walk in front of him, he talks. Um, and he says like five different phrases at random. Uh, but this is a limited edition that they had at Disney World only um, in the early 2000s. Um, and they only made like uh, less than 5,000 of them. And I just, uh, he, he's just, the detail on him is... Yeah, I mean, he's a big Jack Sparrow. If you look underneath the um, base, what's the name on the base? Is there's, there's two manufacturers that generally make. Doesn't say. That's right. NECA. So it says Disney NECA. NECA. Don't know that one. That might be a third one, but the the two that I know um, are from Star Wars statues. So I've got, I've got. A, uh, officially, the world's largest collection of Star Wars statues. Really? Yep. So I've got officially. I've got five. Yeah, yeah. I've got five, and they're um, three foot tall. And the next closest person's got two. They see. Um, so I've got Darth Vader and Obi Wan Kenobi, which can stand alone or 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 be fighting together from Star Wars. Luke, Han, uh, and, and Leia. And I keep on getting offers to buy the set. Um, so the, the value of them has gone up exponentially because the, some of them are, they make, different, they make different numbers of them. So I think, I think Darth Vader is like one of 500, whereas the Luke that I've got, because they have a couple of Lukes, it's one of two and a half thousand. But yeah, the Boba Fett was the first to sell out. I couldn't even, when I discovered them, Boba Fett had already sold out. So. But, and this was, this was, these were brought um, before the, all the new movies have been released with the thousands of new characters. So these are all the traditional characters, you might say. But yeah, it's, um, in some ways, it's my retirement fund. They're not toys. You can't give them to anybody to play with. Um, they're actually all in their boxes, sadly enough, but that's how they hold their greatest value. Um, so yeah. Yeah, and it's of... of um recently found a basketball trading forum or Facebook group. Um, and so I've, I've been going through, I've actually got some sitting here. I don't know if you can see that. My card collection from when I was 10 years old and spent all my $5 a week going down and listen. I don't know if you remember back in the day, they would, used to have card machines in the, in the um, DVD or video stores. And kids would go and, and there'd be some packets in there that you could buy for like five dollars, or there'd be some cards for like fifty cents or a dollar. And I'd, I'd sit there for an hour and then making. This was before the days of really having the internet. So my yeah. mum um, ordered a couple of the card books from the states, where you go through and look at all the collections. So I'd pull out my little book and see if anything for fifty cents. Was worth any. so anyway, the last um, I, I've got quite a good collection of that. Over the last month or so, I've been sorting through it and, and selling doing auctions on these um, basketball card um, you know, Facebook forums, 50 cents for some, and some some cards I'll sell for $100. Um, so, you know, there's a, it's funny eh, how many people have got their little collectible thing that you just would have no idea. There's, like a, hoarder. You, Rome, with your there's a hoarder in every one of us. Now, 
we'll get to Neil who can introduce himself in a second, but um, you, you'll appreciate this, Neil. My dad has every Otago rugby program ever and every All Black program except for one, which is a replication of the one of the 1905 ones. Um, wow. So... I, I said to him, I said, "Wow, this like he's got he's got one of the largest private rugby collections, and now he now he you know every week there's a parcel at the doorstep with a note saying, this was my granddad's blazer or my uncle's jersey, and he's passed away, and we've been told you're a person that would like to look after it and 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 give it justice. So he's got he's got a rack of like about twenty jackets, I don't know about twenty all black caps from various people over history." S match balls, rugby jerseys, you name it. So half the house is a um, rugby memorabilia place. And um, just, to, just to make you laugh, in the will it says either son can keep it all or it all gets donated to um, the Target Rugby Union as a library. So we, we can't sell any of it. Um, <laughs> which mm. hadn't planned to, but um, that we discovered that was in the will. I was like, oh, okay. But... Um, yeah, as Dad says, um, it's only okay. valuable. It's only valuable if someone's prepared to pay for it. Yeah. So, how do you work out which son get? Do you have to have a Star Wars battle? Or? <laughs> no, well, I don't know. There's so much stuff there now. I don't know what we'll do with it. But um, hopefully, that's another ten years away, and I don't even really want to think about it. So, um, oh. probably probably shouldn't have mentioned it, but it was just an irony, you know, funny thing in the world. But let's go to um, Commander Forster from the uh, New Order. From the dark side. Dark side. There you go. Black, black t-shirts was part of the, the rules today. Um, yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm, I'm Neil Forster. I work for Mealsoft, which is a Salesforce company um, up in Auckland, and have been working at home, which, surprisingly enough, most people have. Um, it's, we've been busy, um, so it's been less twiddling thumbs and more keeping in, in touch with stuff, um, video as it is. And other than that, um, I've actually been enjoying it. It's been good. No commute into central Auckland, which everyone can, anyone can align to if they've ever been through it. And um, those that haven't, don't. Yes. Because it's what Pukekohe, I remember when I, remember when I drive out to have that coffee with you on the way to Hamilton, actually, on the way to one of Daniel's LinkedIn locals in Hamilton. So I decided to drive through to Pukekohe. Being a good Dunedin lad, I had to get my Google Maps out and, and wind my way through, and um, yeah, sort of, sort of part of the country I haven't seen before. <laughs> well, apparently we're part of Auckland. I refuse to accept it. Secessionist state down here. <laughs> oh, Roger's just gone. I was just going to say, now we've got through all the uh, introductions, and everyone's equally had a bit of a go. We can just open the floor. So first to get in and start a subject. It's over to you. And there was silence. <laughs> so how are, you know, everyone's getting the video meetings, the Zooms, the Hangouts, the team talks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Are people over it? Mm -hmm. I don't, I'll go last. Everyone else, you go first. Yes and no, I guess. Um, <laughs> the, yes, I think for the meetings where you could meet in person, but there's a lot of, business has done overseas, um, using us as an example, where you used to have guys traveling for two weeks and being away from their families for that time um, to attend in-person meetings in Southeast Asia, which now is all being pushed to Zoom, which has been great. You know, it's just showing that it can be done that way versus in the past, it was always, no, you have to be here, which has been pretty awesome, really, for most of us uh, sales guys that travel. It'll be interesting to see if people regress back to Mm. what they consider the norm. Yeah. The you won't, you won't be flying internationally, though. Well, I hope not. So you, you <laughs> can't. Borders are locked down. We're not letting people out, and we're not letting people in. Mm. Uh, except except for, for if they play, play rugby league. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I mean, that, that's easy to contain and manage, because it's... A, a it also increases right. the IQ of both countries. Ooh. <laughs> well, well um, my, my cousin's in that team. <laughs> He's just gone back home because he, li he, he lives in, he grew up, well, he's originally a Kiwi, but he grew up in Australia since the age of nine. So he had moved back here to be a warrior and um, now he's moved back there to be a warrior. 
Um, but yeah, so the there's there's some real. This is coming back to that fake news or potentially, you know, people are saying stuff to suit their agenda, uh, and it's not actually going to be reality. But it puts the, you know, makes everyone gears everyone towards that. So there have been discussions coming out supposedly from the government that uh, international travel won't really happen again for ten years. And when I heard that, I was like, what? And that was two weeks ago, and now we've. There's my toy. And now we've got um, the Anzac bubble being worked on. So looking at being able to open that and have um, I think the contract contact tracing right, then the idea is that it can be done without much um, regulation. I I don't know. I, I hope it means you've got to have a test to prove that you don't have it or that you're not whatever. And then you can travel with contract tracing. But um, yeah, it seems as though that might be sort of uh, coming back sooner than we think, but um, while the international lockdown is happening, there won't be any travel to Asia or other parts of the world. But um, if that changes as quickly as the Anzac bubble, then then we'll be put to the test. So back to the um, element of Zoom, I know my students have been finding it so difficult online as opposed to in class so that's something i think will be everyone will be looking forward to going back to is that is that because the students are um younger more sociable and and have a whole lot more built around going to a lecture than just the lecture with no offense to you as a lecturer but um well, well i think there's a couple of factors one is the fact at home it's harder to concentrate with children and everything else around true and and two um it's taken time to adjust to new systems maybe if you've been doing it since beginning it might be different but suddenly in the middle of a course everything's changed exams suddenly wiped out and it's like what what are you going to do next like we've been it's been kind of yeah, turmoil, and I think it stressed a lot of people out. Um, I've had quite a few students with mental breakdowns. And... I was there. Yeah. Well, that's um. That's not so good to hear. No. See, there's a there's um one that has actually been reported by the Director General of Health. Um, uh, so there's an article in the one of the news stations had run a story about the increase in mental health and the increase in suicides and the director of general health um wrote, wrote a post i commented on it uh, about how the actual statistics that they have um don't say that there's been an, an increase it's been the same so it hasn't decreased but it hasn't had this massive increase that one of the stories had been so um you know while you're having uh, talked about some students having some breakdowns um, which might be new for them and new for you to hear of them happening, uh, might mean it might mean that in this situation, other breakdowns that would have happened aren't happening, and therefore mm. it balances it out statistically. Yeah, so, it could be. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But um, in general, everyone's um, bubble community and friends are, are all sort of more in the thumbs up region than the thumbs down, or yeah. Everyone, yep. Yep. How about you, Steely? Are you still there? Yep, I'm still here. Oh, look, yeah. I, I'm, this, the education one's an interesting one. Uh, we were on a, a meeting last night and um, with three 17-year-old kids and a couple of grammar kind of uh, talk kids. Um, they're not enjoying the remote uh, element of it. Um, so, yeah, I think it's horse for courses, but I think um, it has been very difficult, especially at primary school age. My wife's a primary school teacher, and you know, kids aren't, aren't really engaging. It's 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 not it's quite foreign to them. I, I do think they'll adapt. Bits of it will be used again, and face to face classrooms will be important. The Economist had a good article in the weekend about the importance of education and getting back to school. So I really hope that at level two, schools are, are more functioning than they are now because it's really critical because um, it breaks down all the, the social barriers. 
Um, it, it's better for the economy. It's better for um, uh, equity issues. Um, without an education, how do some of the uh, underprivileged children now get up in the world? So getting schools and getting education ramped up again is critical in my mind, even possibly ahead of retail. You know, it's um, the thing that we may forget is that kids are actually still developing. Uh, so going through this time, um, while, they're, they're, while they're adaptable and flexible and all the rest of it, um, depending on what age they're at, uh, this can be, could be creating a bigger impact on some kids' um, personality and character um, than we might care to realise or imagine. But um, it's interesting. I was thinking when you're talking, Andrew, uh, you know, parents are talking about trying to re reduce screen time, uh, which says kids love their screen time. So they love their screen time for the entertainment, but not for education. But perhaps it's not 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 as simple as that. It's not so much about the education versus entertainment, but it's about the um, the, the lack of uh, oxytocin or the, the lack of um, being in person in that uh, environment. So, okay. so, what about you, Angela? You deal with a lot of uh, kids through your work with Variety. How is the charity scene and families and kids? I imagine that's probably pretty hard going. It's an interesting life at the moment. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, the pool of people that we're supporting has increased with job losses and the economic chain-down. Um, we're seeing a lot of families who would never have had to apply for help before um, coming to us um, with, you know, a whole new set of challenges, you know, because they're not used to asking for help, because they're not used to accessing um, external services and things like that. So um, there have been some ADR weeks and that's, you know, just got to be done. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, it, it feels really good to be in a position to be able to do something, um, even if it feels like it's at snail's pace. Um, we're seeing a lot of mixed feedback from the kids um, as to how they're feeling during the lockdown, you know, and there's cultural factors and, and um, there seems to be a bit of a difference between how rural and urban kids are dealing with it. Um, a lot of kids are actually finding it really good to have that extra time with mum or dad or caregiver, um, you know, and have the one-on-one, -on -one, even though mum or dad or caregiver might be really stressed at the moment, um, which doesn't in the end do great things for a kid's brain chemistry, but, you know, it's, it's a bit of a balancing act. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting times. I don't think we'll see the real... I don't think we'll see it all shake out for another good six months mm -hmm. to a year for most kids. Um, my 12 year old is just, her biggest problem is that the technology is too easy for her and it's not easy enough for the teacher. When it comes to education, that's her biggest problem. So she spends most of her time rolling her eyes, which is not unusual for a 12 year old girl anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> yes, it's always the way, isn't it? I remember when I, I used to sell uh, into education, sell technology into education and, um, I got given a tour of uh, um, Point England School, who's part of the Manaya Kalani Trust, and they are probably one of the leaders in um, technology use. And um, they, you know, I just had no idea, right? So here's a seven-year-old kid who had, had 26,000 followers on her blog. Um, and we walk into, they have a media room. So they, by the time they leave primary school, they all know how to um, do the camera work, sound work, editing. So basically, um, you can work in a studio from the age of seven or eight, if you, if you think about it that way. And partly what the program is about is actually, by the, so you, when you're five and six, you don't have a computer. I think, no, yeah, five, six, and seven, you don't have a computer, but eight, nine, and 10, you have a computer. And you're also taught to do level one break fix, replace keys, replace screens, change hard drives. Like, I grew up with a mum who's a CIO now and a brother who's a software developer. And because I was the youngest and they were already you know, into it, 
I couldn't fix a bloody thing because um, I'd grab it off me as soon as it wasn't working. I'm like, I'll fix it because they wanted to fix it. So now I'm left without the ability to do anything um, and have to, have to go back to them for help. Whereas these little eight-year-olds are like, oh, yeah, change your hard drive, no problem. Mm. Um, so it's quite quite eye-opening um, compared to, yeah, the people that are teaching them who would be like me. Yeah, it's te- technology native, as you call it, isn't it? All the kids born from the 2000s onwards are just so much more advanced than we are. It's just natural to them, right? Yeah. But I'd say they're not scared of it. It's not new to them. Like it's been there since they won. It's a bit like to me, the people who drive cars versus the people who fix cars. So technology natives, lots of drive car drivers. But having sadly grown up in a time when you had to open things up and move pins around, um, you know, even swapping a hard drive now is so much easier. And RAM, when you when you open up some of the engines, I notice a lot of the technology natives they have no idea what's inside nor to be honest most of them don't care i just want to use it get out of the road make it work yeah. yep you know, I'm a, I'm a, i drive like that um and my wife is actually the uh mechanic who used to be a uh, drag racer <laughs> um so it's quite funny so uh, she's i still don't do any of my own technology or plugging in tvs my wife does all of that <laughs> So I just get out of the way. I'm going to drive it. Yep. Anyway, um, what was I going to ask you, Andrew? And oh, um, now only only to talk about statistically, but um, as you are the only person that I know of being close to the picture, um, what about the domestic violence? Like I've seen the new adverts come on for domestic violence. Yeah, you know, it's not okay, but it is okay to ask for help. Um, has that have you seen a rise um, through the work you do for the charity? Do you notice that this is real or has that just stayed the same? I mean, I think there's a big, there's something to be said about, you know, the statistics and being so reliant on reporting. And obviously this is something that is now harder to report because the potential victim is, is stuck in the home with their abuser. Um, so, you know, making that phone call is not that easy, you know, even if it's, or sending that text, you know, one of the really common things about, um, domestic abuse is that it starts with what people term as the lower level of abuse, which is controlling someone's social life and technology and things like that. So, you know, reporting is probably the biggest issue that I would imagine. That could be hidden. It's stopping us from seeing, yeah. I mean, there's a big trust. And as I said, I think there's going to be a catch up. You know, once we all get to a a bit more freedom, we might see a few more reports. Um, You know, or people who have just taken shelter underground with a mate or something, you know, the authorities might not be aware of them. So I'd be loath to say at the moment, I would be surprised if there hasn't been some increase um, because I have seen that people are drinking more um and things like that so that always has a bearing well yeah i was was sort of wondering whether in in some cases um it maybe helped uh resolve it in terms of you know being forced to be closer together um and obviously changes all all the other dynamics right so there's, there's not the going to work there's not the they're getting road rage on the road and or on the way back and the different things that might trigger different people aren't there to trigger them. Um, but then again, new things are there to trigger them, like being stuck in a place. But um, Yeah, I mean, when people's, you know, fight or flight instinct is activated. Um, oh. That was Dale. Oh. Um, when that's activated, you know, you never really know how it's going to, going to happen like i said we haven't had a lot of reports um coming through from the families that we deal with but then again i mean a lot of the families that we deal with if we're aware that that's an at-risk home we're already working with um other organizations other support groups in their community to you know try and help with that so yeah i think a lot of it really does come down to reporting and, and we may see that increase or decrease as the weeks wear on 
on that cheerful note. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, let's change the subject now but on a cheerful note. Oh, we're on, we're on, on 9.29, so let's do uh, parting comments before we head off to the day. Um, and we'll start with Mr. Brooks on my on my left, as I see it, but on your, maybe you're right. I don't know, but Richard? Yeah. Uh, parting no, thoughts? No, just, just thanks for everything, guys. It's been, been good to catch up the last few days with everyone. Um, I'm just looking forward to level two, to be honest. I don't care what it means. <laughs> it's just being able to get out and do a bit more stuff and actually meet people, even if it's a metre apart or two metres apart or whatever the regulations will be. It would be nice to, to get there. So well, I'm living for that light at the end of the tunnel. Awesome. So here's a question for our parting question. Is what are you going to do when you've got the freedom to do it again? And I'll start off and say my my tramping pack that's been up a number of mountains but hasn't left hasn't been outdoors for 20 years i did it all during my younger years it's 20 meters behind me on the other side of the house i'm going to give it a bash in the in the white tax uh, once we can nice. so what's everyone else's dream for lockdown lock up unlocking unlocking hey. <laughs> i'm just looking forward to getting on the squash court yeah I was thinking Daniel's going to be on the basketball court in the gym. What about you, Steely? Running around the rugby field? Uh, no, no. I think it might be just uh, reconnecting with family who are out of zone. Kind of. Um, oh, yeah. Getting down south and seeing parents and things. Yes, well, maybe we can book a flight together, mate. I'll go down yeah. and see, see mum, mum and dad. So, um, little known secret to everyone, uh, Andrew's father and my father used to work together. So we've um, known each other for a few few extra years than most people here. And our um, parents now live, um, while well, Dunedin's not a big place, um, they now live, what, 500 metres apart? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. So what about you, Andrew? What are you going to do out of lockdown? Um, just take the kids out, I think, to explore, you know, what the whole... The, the new world looks like you know see what's changed and and i think one of the things that i worry about them missing is other people's perspective so just getting out and, and exploring with them really cool. regina um i think i'm um checking on my mum check she's okay and my brothers and sisters and meeting up and checking they're okay cool Hopefully. well with that, let's say, have a good day. Oh, Steely, can you stay on the call? Yep. Cool. Um, we've got... Is all secret stuff to discuss. another call. <laughs> hey? <laughs> secret stuff to discuss. Yeah, yeah Dunedin it's old, stuff. It's the old Dunedin handshake. Uh... Tan Mafia, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Thanks, Ryan. Bye. Have a good day, everyone. Good See you later. See you, guys. You, bye. Bye. And...